Hi, hello, friends. Good evening, everyone of you on this lovely Sunday evening. I welcome everyone of you to Invest Ten, India's largest retail investors online conference. I am Ashok Devanam Priya, the CEO of Traders Gurukul, and also the host for your today's program. It's a great pleasure to invite everyone of you to the most influential stock investor conference of the year. I am sure by the end of this session, you would have a great knowledge about Saket Mehrotra's investment methodology. I'm sure it will help you to make better decisions ahead. I would like to thank our media partner, Money Control Pro, the largest financial portal in India with millions of daily readership on their website, who helped us to reach a wider audience in a short period of time. I would also like to thank our title sponsor, Sher Khan, one of the leading stock brokers in India with millions of customers. The company offers online security brokerage and portfolio management services to institutions, large corporate houses and individual investors. They have been serving Indian customers from the past 37 years now. The speaker for today is Mr. Saket Mehrotra. He is a chartered accountant and CS by profession. He had played multiple roles in the world of corporate finance with conglomerates and MNCs like ITC, Philip Morris International. He has he had the privilege of working in many of the early stage startups. He has been investing in for ever since 2011, so almost 12 years now. He's a full time fund manager working with family office handling Indian public equity assets of close to $20 million. Through the journey of sharing content, he also <clears throat> connected with the masses finest minds from investing business and fitness. He has been a contributing writer in various platforms like investing.com money control and runs his own newsletter known as beta to alpha where he generally shares insights with thousands of his investors. Saket, it's a great pleasure to have you on board today. On behalf of traders Gurukul, money control pro, Sher Khan, I extend my warm welcome into this program as an elite speaker. Go ahead, sir. The stage is yours. Thank you, Ashok. Thank you, Ashok, for that uh, warm introduction. And uh, it's also an honor and privilege to be here and present my investment methodology with uh, the attendees that are attending this webinar on a Sunday evening. Now, just before I start, Ashok, just a quick check. I hope my audio is fine and the screen is there. Uh, and then I can just start right away. It's perfect. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So uh, standard disclaimer before we start, uh, you know, I'm not a savvy registered investment advisor and uh, through the course of this presentation today, uh, we'll be talking about multiple companies, uh, multiple stocks, securities. Uh, this could be listed in India as well as abroad. These are not buy, sell or hold recommendations. I may personally have a position in these stocks and I may sell it without prior notification. So all the contents of this presentation are for educational purposes only. Please consult your financial advisor before you invest, right? Uh, so without wasting much time, let us jump right into uh, the presentation. Uh, now the topics that I'll be covering today are actually divided into four parts. So the first part, we will spend some time in understanding about risks and returns in investing. Now. Ideally, what happens is whenever people talk about investing, a lot of times we get uh, leered by the fact that what are the returns, what are the expectations, what is the upside, and a lot of times we miss a very basic concept of personal finance or let's say corporate finance is that whenever we talk about returns, it is also important to look at what is the risk that we are taking uh, in order to make those returns. In the second part of my presentation today, I'll be talking about understanding profit pools. Now, what exactly is the concept of a profit pool? Let's say today you're having a coffee at Starbucks and uh, you decide to, let's say, you know, start farming for coffee because you're seeing that the coffee is selling for 400 rupees a cup. And then you only realize that the coffee that is actually going into Starbucks is being sold at probably five rupees. And the entire profit pool is actually within the roasting to retail side of selling that coffee. So we'll use some examples and understand how profit pools work and how you as an investor can actually end up investing in the right profit pool to ensure that over the long term, your wealth stays protected. 
and then we'll spend some time in understanding scuttlebutt what exactly is scuttlebutt this term is often used loosely uh, is there a way to do this effectively is there some merit to this argument so we'll try and cover that and finally we'll conclude by talking about how can we develop a framework and how we as investors can stick to that framework as we move ahead so let's first start with the concept of risks and returns now ever since a very young age uh, in case you remember this is again uh, a concept that has been covered in elementary economics uh, and all the way back in school right that higher you take risk higher will be the returns now in this scenario let me give you an example right so let's say today uh, i make you an offer and say that hey uh, you know there is we all know that there's a uh, there's a possibility of some geopolitical uncertainty that's happening in russia and ukraine uh, and you know i make you an offer that hey why don't you travel to ukraine and uh, take a picture in ukraine and come back and i'll give you 1 crore rupees as a reward right uh, for some reason you take up that offer you travel to ukraine uh, and you know you do what you have to you click a selfie and you come back only this time when you come back to me i end up telling you that hey instead of 1 crore maybe this time what i'll do is you make another trip to ukraine and maybe click a selfie with a soldier which is present there and instead of 1 crore i'll make you an offer for 5 crore rupees uh you think in your head that you know it was easier the first time i ended up making 1 crore rupees i can again go back uh, do the same thing and probably make 5 crore rupees right so you actually again take the pain of taking that trip going to ukraine finding a soldier clicking a selfie and then again come back now at this point i say that you know wonderful uh, you know you almost made 1 crore in the first time you made 5 crores now how about i make you a final offer how about you go back to ukraine again uh, maybe go inside a tank make a video of that tank and come back and i am willing to offer you 50 crore rupees now at this point of time you are thinking you know almost two times i have done this it's been harmless i have made crores of rupees for free uh, what is the harm in doing this only this time when you actually fly down to ukraine maybe your plane doesn't land or let's say you end up finding a tank and you go inside that tank but right when you are making the video the tank explodes now in all these three scenarios right if you look at the graph that is there in front of your screen while your return expectation was way higher somewhere around here you were also taking a lot of risk and that risk was you were going to a potential war zone where you were running the risk of losing your life so one always needs to remember whenever there is a quotient of high returns one always has to be skeptical and understand what is the risk in this whole transaction or what is the risk in this offer so when i was making an offer to make 1 crore rupees or 5 crore rupees or 50 crore rupees why is it that i am getting so much free money because there has to be some element of risk whenever there are higher returns so that brings me back to this question right every time we've been told higher the risk higher the returns but is this the right way to look at risks and returns or how should we as indians look at risks and returns now sadly uh, you know almost for 2 years now uh, and this is also an attitude that we've had for the longest time is that we just think that lala risk hai to ish hai right but that's not the way to look at risk the way to look at risk is as under right so the higher you take risk the higher is your range of outcome so let's say you know you are investing in maybe fixed deposits so let's say today your fixed deposit in india is giving you a return of 5% uh so you know for sure that let's say if you are giving 100 rupees today after a year you'll get 105 rupees and uh, that is basically the return that you will make now the other part of the argument is that there is a underlying inflation of almost 5 to 6% so effectively you end up losing money right so there could be no return or there could also be Uh, almost negligible negative return so the range of outcome is very narrow now let's say i give you an option which was let's say that offer of going to ukraine and clicking a picture or instead of that i tell you that hey there's this new cryptocurrency that has come in uh, why don't you go ahead and put uh, let's say 1 lakh rupees and you can easily make 20 lakh rupees now 
the issue there is while you can potentially make 20 lakh rupees uh, you can also end up losing that 1 lakh rupees so that is something which is important uh, so like just to give you another example right so what happens is when we look at this graph we just look at this part of the graph we only see what is the return expectation that we can get which is you know always on the upper side and we think that okay this is what he can get but we typically try and ignore what is the downside and that is the first foundational principle that all investors should keep in mind when they are looking at risks and returns in fact i can almost bet and tell you that when we talk about returns we typically do not look at risks and that to my mind is is quite important because what an investment will deliver to you in in terms of the returns is not something which is in, in your control uh returns are typically decided by the markets and anyone with even billions of dollars at the end of the day is just a very small piece in the entire market because at some level we all need to accept the fact that the markets are actually quite bigger than you and me or any big guy with big pockets so one needs to be careful as to what are the risks in that investment and the more we are able to manage our risk effectively returns can take care of themselves now typically at this point of time you would probably have this question in your mind that okay you've told me about fixed deposits you've told me about cryptocurrencies where does equities fit in this entire risk return trade off so equities would typically try and fit somewhere here right because you know when you are investing in equities you are carrying the risk of volatility you are carrying the risk of whether the businesses will perform over the long run or not whether there will be uh, you know value migration happening so on and so forth but at the same time if you are able to really understand the business well and actually go deeper in understanding the finer nuances of that business you can actually end up moving the risk return payoff to the left and that is just to do with the risk but at the same time if you know what you are getting into and if you are careful about what are the potential risks in the system you can end up making disproportionate returns so the whole concept of this entire risk return trade off is know what the risks are and uh, typically higher risk does not mean higher returns higher risk actually means that there is a higher range of outcomes while on one end you can make massive payoffs on the other end you can also end up losing your capital so at this end of the risk spectrum you can actually have or end up having negative returns instead of positive returns and this is where you start losing your capital so this is the way to look at the risk and return graph so now that we've covered risk and return graph right we all know that you know for the longest time uh, einstein has uh, you know given us the theory of relativity is given us e equals mc square the popular formula many of you may not be from a science background so uh, again there's no uh, issue with that albert einstein is actually quite popular for another quote that he's made where he talks about the fact that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world and i always try and say this uh, to a lot of investors is you know if compound interest is really used well one can actually use the eighth wonder of the world to go and see the remaining seven wonders of the world and that is what we will try and see uh, or you know you pick up any uh, common investing wisdom you do just a simple excel math you will find out that over the long term compounding really works well in your favor but for some reason uh, investors not just in india but globally have not been able to really tap into the concept of compounding and we have data to show that so let's jump into that so if you see the sensex returns for almost the last uh, 31 years in absolute terms sensex has given a return of 4097% i'm not even you know looking at nifty because if you put nifty the returns will actually be higher so uh, but on an average the sensex has delivered a return of almost 13% year on year nifty would be somewhere around 14 14.5% and you know it started in september 1990 when sensex was at 1420 and as on september 2021 uh, nifty sensex was almost 60000 and you know throughout this entire journey there have been so many issues or there have been so many challenges there have been so many black swan events you know there was the dot com bust there was uh, let's say the lemon brothers filing for bankruptcy we all know this 2008 uh, 
issue when the world went into the first, uh, let's say, wave of economic recession after the Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy. Uh, demonetization came in, GST was implemented. You know, you can talk about multiple negative issues, but yet if you see that Sensex has always had an upward bias or, you know, you can replace Sensex with Nifty, you can replace Nifty with markets. I mean, you pick up any of these charts, you will see typically there has been an upward bias. So let's say if you end up maybe zooming in, right? So let's say, uh, let me pull up the pen. So let's say you ended up entering the market somewhere here. Within three years, I mean, let's say you entered at 2006. In 2008, you would have lost your heart. You would have lost your entire free will and said, you know, markets are not for me. Let me get out. And right when you got out, you saw the market on a one-way journey. Now, let's say you entered the market, you know, right when Brexit happened. You saw that there was a big dip uh, because the market corrected from here to here. And then, you know, you continued riding this rally and you ended up selling it here. You said that, you know, I made a nice thousand, two thousand point move and, you know, maybe the market will crash now only to see that in seven years, Sensex actually ended up going from 28,000 to 60,000, right? So that is something which one needs to sort of look at that when you look at markets in short time intervals, you will probably not be able to make a lot of sense. But when you actually zoom out and take a longer term view, right? I mean, forget about any view. If you just look at when Sensex started and where Sensex is today, you will have your answer in terms of what, what is the kind of growth expectations you can have and what is, let's say, the kind of return expectations you can have. And that should give you like a clearer picture. Yes, there will be years where you can end up making almost maybe 50, 60 percent returns in a year. But there will also be years where, you know, you might not make any returns or you might make negative returns. So in a combination of all these three, you will actually end up seeing that uh, over the long run, the markets typically tend to reward well if compounding is really used to your advantage. Now, you know, we briefly touched upon the risk and return trade-offs. So just like, uh, just to give you some numbers in the last 28 odd years, Nifty has delivered a return of 14% with a standard deviation of 30%. Now, what does this mean? So let's say if I write, uh, just give me a minute. Yeah. So let's say if I write 14% here, something that Nifty has always delivered for the longest time. On some years, the Nifty actually ended up doing 44%. And in some years, the Nifty actually ended up doing minus 16%. So what does this mean? So Nifty has been in this range. Uh, in some years, the standard deviation, because standard deviation is basically measured by risk or what is the volatility. And that gives you a sense of what is the range that you can expect. So on some years, because there is a volatility or a standard deviation factor of 30%, in some years, it delivered a return of 44. In some years, it delivered a return of minus 16. But over the long term, it has actually ended up delivering close to 13 to 14. I mean, Nifty has done 14, Sensex has done 13. You can, it is safe to assume that over long term, this return is what has happened.